Why you be all on my line about nothing? Why won't you go get you a dollar or something? Dollar or something? Get you a dollar or something? Recording live in the Conscious Creative Media Studios from somewhere in the middle of nowhere, North Carolina, you are listening to the world's greatest photography podcast with your host, Bill Howard. Thank you, Scott, and this is the world's greatest photography podcast, and my name is Bill Howard. I am your host today. I am with the former director of photography for Amphon Sports. He is not the current director, so no reason to contact him to try to get on with Amphon Sports. Uh, he is also has his own magazine at nnomedia.com. You can see his work there, as well as on Instagram and Twitter at WH McClary. That's M-C-C-L-A-R-Y. Harrison McClary is our guest. So, Harrison, for building a portfolio... You did a lot with football. I guess it was was Athlon mostly football? Yeah, we did, um, you know, football, basketball. Um, but basketball, we bought all those photos pretty much from, you know, the wires. Um, let's see. We did a golf magazine for a little while, but it went away. And a NASCAR magazine. And that was the majority of them. Basketball. It- football, college, pro, NFL, yeah. It, if a photographer is trying to get on to to work with you, is or, or any magazine that's, say, one sport specific, whether it be you know PGA, whether it's football, whether it's basketball, it's one sport specific, is there a reason to send a mixture of sports in your portfolio? Well, it would show some diversity, but you want to be sure the majority of what you show them is the sport that you're trying to – um that they primarily do just because if that's what they do they want to see that that you can do the sport that they're asking to cover they don't want to see that oh you've got great golf photos but we do football or you know you've got great football photos but we do lacrosse i mean you know there is some crossover there if you can do football you can probably do lacrosse but if you do golf maybe you can't do football because it is totally different the way those sports are played so now, you kinda, like if, if I were submitting to you and, and you're, you know, a, as the director of photography at Athlon, knowing that you need individual shots of players and, again, offensive line, defensive line, they're, they're your monsters as far as trying to get, I would assume. Mm-hmm. It has been for me anyway. Do you want some of those images in the portfolio to – to show that they can isolate players? Yeah, I mean, that definitely wouldn't hurt because that's what they're looking for there. You want to be able to say, oh, yes, they can do that. You know, that, yeah, you can get the great game action shots, but also get the individual players and especially those players that are hard to shoot. And let's face it, if you get a great action shot of an uh, of a lineman, a lot of times it's a great action shot no matter what because sometimes some, they do some crazy stuff. I've had pictures of them choking each other and other everything else. So. <laughs> yeah. I- I have one where uh, a defensive end, this was several years ago, it was East Carolina and Tulsa or East Carolina and Temple, one or the other. The uh, The defensive end was leaping the offensive guard, maybe. I, I'm not sure. It was one of the offensive players. Leg spread and the offensive guard is like punching out with one arm. And it's just a, it's one of my few beautiful shots of a defensive end or uh, that line play anyway. Mm-hmm. But yeah, it, I know that can be very, very difficult. Now, if somebody sends in, it's all game action and it's primarily quarterbacks and wide receivers and running backs. Do you go and say, can you send me some isolated shots of others? Or did would you bring them on based on that if that work was really good? Uh, I might would give them a shot if that work was really good, but you have to understand, you know, just, this is just from Athlon and, you know, some people didn't understand this when they would call and I would say I really didn't have any need for photographers is Athlon had a set of photographers we had used for years and these guys were really good and they had stayed loyal to us. So we stayed loyal to them, you know, very seldom did I need to find another photographer in an area because... I mean, you know, you've got somebody who's been shooting for you for 10 years and they do a great job. Why would you try to find somebody new? 
And, you know, that's also kind of what goes on in the business. That's why sometimes it's hard to find work for people because, you know, if somebody's doing a great job, they're not going to be looking for somebody either. So, right. you know, that's probably not the way you wanted that question answered, but that just is one of the things that I ran into frequently. And one thing that I just want to throw out there to people to understand is, and this happened to me one night, somebody called me at like nine o'clock at night on a Saturday night wanting to shoot for Athlon. Do you think I ever called that person back? I was at home and they called my personal number at home trying to get on shooting for Athlon. Don't ever call an editor at home unless and, you are shooting for them and something is going drastically wrong and you need to tell them. <laughs> you know? Exactly. And that brings up another point. How often should someone check back to the point where it, you don't want to be lost or forgotten, but you also don't want to feel like you're nagging them to death just to try to shoot for them? Uh, maybe a couple of times, and if they don't respond to you, it probably means that they're not interested. Um, okay. I know, I mean, I can't speak for every publication, but at Athlon, I was a one-man band. I did everything, and... Frequently, I mean, I, I guess maybe it was bad, but if I didn't have an interest in something, I just didn't respond because I didn't have time to sit there and respond to every email I got. I mean, I, you get a lot of emails, people looking for work when you're a director of photography. And I would try to respond, but not always did I have time, especially it was during production season or even during football season because football season, you're crazy. You know, I was on the road every weekend and I had five to six games at least covered every week that I had to edit and get online and assign and get credentials for and make IPTC data for and make hit lists for or be sure that the editors made the hit list for me um, and that kind of thing. I mean, it was it was literally a seven day a week job. And so, yeah, something sometimes it did not rank high on my list of importance got overlooked. And that's the way it is, I'm sure, with everybody that has that type of job. Right. Now, it, it, let's say somebody contacts an editor somewhere and, and the editor says, well, right now, you know, the, our field's kind of full. We, mm -hmm. you know, I've got photographers that cover everything, but I'll, I'll put you in the file, I'll keep you on, in mind. Do you mm -hmm. check back in six months? Do you check back the following season? Yeah. I mean, you no, know, it wouldn't hurt to send a follow-up email halfway through the season. And then again, about, you know, a month before the season starts next year, just to say, Hey, look, has anything changed? You know, I'm still here if you need me or whatever. Cause that doesn't hurt. But if you send it every two weeks, they're going to eventually just not even pay attention when that email comes over. Probably. Yes. I mean, you know, I had one guy, um, here who, when I came on at Athlon, he was wanting me to tell him how many games I was going to give him a year. And he lived here in the same town where I work, you know, and I mean, generally their philosophy was you're our employee you should be covering the games because you're a photographer and we don't want to pay somebody to cover games that you're here and can cover and this guy wanted me to travel him to shoot stuff and he wanted me to commit to all these games and stuff and i mean athlon shot day games only and also if it was bad weather we canceled games so i couldn't say from one monday to the next friday what games i was going to have covered until they listed the times you know, especially for college and, ball. Yeah, especially for college ball. So it got it got so annoying. This guy that I finally just told him to never, ever call me again because he kept harassing me. He would call and I wouldn't answer the phone because I'd be in a meeting with my boss. And then he would call my personal cell phone. And his number was so close to my daughter's school number. I would answer the call. And it was just like, I'm in a meeting with the executive editor right now. I can't talk. There's a reason I didn't answer the phone, you know. But you don't, you don't want to be that person when you're trying to get work. <laughs> yeah, that's the lesson to our listeners. You do not want to be the stalker. <laughs> yes. <laughs> when, uh, as far as a portfolio, how many images would, is, say, ideal to send? Is it 10 good photos? Is it 100 good photos? Definitely not 100. That's too many to look at. Um, I don't know. I would say 20, 25 at the most. Um, this is just a little anecdotal story from back in the dark ages. And I mean, literally like almost the dark ages in the early eighties, I was applying for an internship. Um, and 
My photo J teacher took my portfolio, looked through it, threw away almost everything and narrowed it down to eight pictures and said, take those pictures right there, reprint them good. And I got the job because the editor at the newspaper said, you had the lowest number of photos in a portfolio, but every single one of them was great. And so I got the job. So there's something to be said for editing tightly. You are listening to the world's greatest photography podcast with your host, Bill Howard. We have the former director of photography with Athlon Sports with us and also the owner and operator of nnomedia.com, a magazine based out of just outside of Nashville, Tennessee, Mr. Harrison McClary, and thank you for spending some time with us today. One last question, sir. When someone has a portfolio that comes over, I know you want everything sharp, you want everything crisp, you want the best photos that they have. But in that same portfolio, do you want the best photos where everything is a running back coming through a line? Or do you want to see a mixture of, say, like the crowd or the cheerleaders and a coach shot, that type thing? Yeah, it's good to have a mixture. I mean, it shows that you're more than a one-dimensional person. You can actually see and think about other aspects of the game because frequently we would do stories where we needed photos of the coaches or we needed, like I said, we needed cheerleader photos and, you know, crowd photos. You know, we would do opening season slideshows where we need pictures of all that kind of stuff. And if you look at the magazines, there's times that we would use things like that. Um, one thing I would say on marketing yourself to photo editors is – Know your target and know what they look for. I had people send me photos that were these horribly Instagrammy looking lifestyle stuff of people jumping in a park or some crazy stuff like that. And it's just like, why are you sending that to me? I'm a photo editor for a sports publication. Or they would send me baby pictures. We're a sports publication. I don't care about baby pictures. I mean, you know, know your market and what you're sending it to. Don't go sending sports photos to a lifestyle magazine or to a food magazine. They're not going to be interested, just like I wasn't interested in those kinds of things sent to me. And quite honestly, there is so much of that kind of stuff that you would get from some of the big agencies. Like Wonderful Machine was god-awful horrible about sending just every single thing they got to me. And it's like, I don't care. I don't want to see all these people you've got shooting for you. They don't do the kind of work I need. Um... You know, target your audience and get them what what you're looking for. Otherwise, you're just going to go straight in a trash can. And quite honestly, as a photo editor, you get so much of that stuff, it has to really stand out to even get caught because we get buried in so much marketing junk that doesn't even relate to us that you need to be sure right on the very front, it slaps you across the face. I am providing what you need for your market. I think that is some of the wisest advice out there because I, I know exactly what you mean. Uh, even on, you said you shoot commercial photography, and I see this in commercial photography as well. While I've got a overall portfolio on my website, when someone says, if, if I'm trying to get a job with, a comp uh, say, a vacation rental company, I'm not going to sit there and send them shots from the Carolina Panthers. I'm not going to sit there and send them shots of a storage facility. I need to send them the type of stuff that they want. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Because otherwise they just don't care. You know, you're it, not showing, you're not doing yourself any favors. Have a diverse portfolio. Do not act as a stalker, but you do want to kind of get your point across. And I'm assuming you want to, what a, a good paragraph, uh, six sentences, four, you know, a paragraph of four sentences and a paragraph of two sentences and a thank you for your time and consideration is probably all the wording you really want, I would imagine, correct? Yeah, you don't need anything really long and wordy because people don't have the time to read it. You know, you're, you're not applying to be a writer. You're applying to be a photographer, so you don't need to have a book written about yourself. Right. <laughs> and, then, and then when they, in that port, or in the query part of it, I, I wouldn't imagine necessarily need to say, this is the equipment I have. Basically what you would do is if you look at it and they're nice images, but they're all say the same perspective, then you may would ask well, what kind of equipment you have to make sure they can catch certain images. But 
mm-hmm. if you're seeing the images coming across and you can tell whether somebody's using a long lens or a short lens. Oh yeah. And you can tell if somebody's using a two eight lens or a, or a consumer F eight lens because the background's blown or it's not. <coughs> and, you know, I guess I want to end this on one thing. There was one photo, I think it was two years ago that you took with the Tennessee football player scoring the touchdown and a celebration with the fans right in front of him from maybe Alabama. Uh, yeah. You're talking about the infamous bird flipping photo. Yes, I am. Uh-huh. <laughs> that Actually, is one that of the most iconic of a... celebration shots I have seen. <laughs> Well, that's actually kind of a funny story on that. You know, I, was, I shot that from one end of the field to the other with a 600 millimeter lens. So it was loose as could be. And what had happened is that Tennessee intercepted a pass and ran it back for a touchdown against Alabama. And it was their one score in that entire game. Um, and the player who scored the touchdown ran through the end zone and ran right straight to the bench. And that's all he did. He didn't do any celebration or anything. And... I was on the wrong guy, quite honestly. And he's running around in front of the other team down there, waving his arms around. I couldn't really tell what he was doing because, I mean, I was a football field length away. And even with a 600, you're not that tight. And I said to one of my friends who was a photographer who works in Tuscaloosa, or actually he works in Montgomery, I said, was he just flipping that guy a bird? He was like, I don't know. I didn't see it. And when I got back in the um, the workroom there at Alabama, I was editing my photos, I just cracked up laughing when I saw that photo because it was just so funny, that guy flipping those birds. And, and, know, and it's not just flipping the birds. It's the reaction, it's the reaction of all the fans. the fans screaming at him as well. It was just a great yeah. composition. It was a great shot. That's one of those where I'll take being lucky over being good any day of the week because that's pretty much <laughs> what that shot was, was just luck. <laughs> now, would you put that in your portfolio? Yeah, definitely. It, it tells a story. I mean, it's, it tells it's a, a story. Again, I thought it was a great shot. Well, again, thank you, Harrison, for joining us today. And make sure you check out his website at, uh, at nnomedia.com. Check out his magazine. And as well as on Instagram and Twitter at WH McClary. That's M-C-C-L-A-R-Y. Or the magazine's Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter accounts at NNOmedia LLC. Any last words, Harrison? No, I think we've pretty much covered it all. Thanks for having me on. Thank you for coming on. And you are listening to the World's Greatest Photography Podcast. And we will see you next week. Why you be all on my line about nothing? Why won't you get you a dollar or something? Dollar or something. Get you a dollar or something. Something. Why you be all on my line about nothing? Why won't you get you a dollar or something? Dollar or something. Get you a dollar or something. Why you be all on my line about nothing? Why won't you go get you a dollar or something? Dollar.